Guys, today I want to have a discussion on what I think the next 2A units are going to be, why I think they're going to be the next 2A units, and potentially what their skills could look like after they are second awakened. I think the comp to us has been dropping some hints. Maybe I'm just looking too much into it, but you know what? It's a discussion. We can discuss those things. That's why That's why it's a discussion, because you guys could chime in in the comments, and then uh, maybe comp to us might even... seems like they're listening lately, so they may actually even pay attention. So this is what I think the next... 2A is going to be, and it might not be too much of a surprise to some of you because we have discussed this in the past. There were reasons pointing to this being maybe not the next one, but one of the next ones. But there's some things that Comptuous has been doing that make me that lead me to believe that the Garudas are going to be the next second awakened unit. So let's get it started. Here's why. For those of you that didn't notice or think too much of it, not a PowerPoint presentation, of course. Uh, there have been some hints leading me to believe that Comptuous is going to give us a Garuda 2A either to the very next or the one after that. Uh, here are some reasons why I think that. Number one, Comptuous gave us a light Garuda in our inbox in one of the last patches when they added extra stuff for new players. This was something early game players got their first day of playing the game that some people fed in the beginning. It almost seems like they wanted us to have access to it for some reason because we didn't have access to cats. We didn't have access to griffins. Some people just never summon them, especially early game players. People have been playing for like six months or whatever or even a year. Like there's no guarantee. There's no secret dungeon for those. There are secret dungeons. For, I mean, like, the, the, the normal element Garudas are super easy to get. The dark one is a secret dungeon. The light one is not a secret dungeon. However, come to us, just put it in our inbox. So if you fed it early game, they're like, here it is again. You have a second opportunity to not feed it, right? That's just, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Here's some more. Uh, number two, uh, in addition to that, come to us has been... Why is this thing so small? Oh, because this is the header. Anyway, uh, in addition to that, Com to us has been posting on their Summoner's War social media pages various things as usual. Usually nothing relevant, but I've noticed several posts that include the Light Garuda Teon. They have been mentioned, and this, these aren't even the only ones, but they have been putting the Light Garuda in a few different things. They got him in this with the two-way Kali. Why? Well, hanging out with Kali. Oh, because they work well together. Yeah, okay. And we got another uh, Light Garuda here. We got another Light Garuda here. It almost seems like they're kind of hinting at something. That's what I'm taking out of this anyway. Uh, so it is not entirely new news. We've always expected Garuda to be a two-way unit. They even mentioned it in one of the behind-the-scenes videos they did a long time ago. This is not a snippet from the actual video where they mentioned him. Uh, or I don't think so anyway. Uh, this is just a sample of one of the behind-the-scenes videos. Uh, also, in addition to that, we've already noticed that units you fight against in the dimensions are also units that you two-way in those dimensions. So this has been pretty accurate. Uh, so far, this has been pretty accurate, and predictions of two-way high elemental have come from this and been correct for dimension Alunia. So we see here, uh, this is already two-way. These are all the things that you fight in Karazhan, right? Um, so uh, Griffins have already been two-wayed. Inugamis have already been two-wayed. Uh, Bears already been two-wayed, and now we don't have these guys two-wayed. Oh my goodness! Everything else in this dungeon is two A's, but not these guys. Well, I mean, not 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 like like Baron, not that. But uh, yeah, so he's always been one of the ones that were like, we're kind of expecting it at some point. Uh, I just feel like it's going to be sooner rather than later based on those other things. So predictions for skill changes. Also, there was a couple of Reddit posts that were discussing this in the past, which we'll take a look at uh, after this. I did not take my uh, opinions for here, my predictions for here based on theirs. But some of us have, I think, the same uh, or similar ideas. So, uh, based on previous 2A buffs, the logical buffs would be a 2-turn attack buff on skill 2 for Konamiya. And skill 3 may either provide immunity on units with no debuffs, or boost attack bar a little bit after the- not a lot, just a little bit after the cleanse. Uh, already a good unit, so probably won't get as drastic of a buff. Uh, I feel like they'll just continue on the same path with that, not change it super crazy. Uh, Tion- see, I kind of disagree with my opinion on Tion here, because uh, what I said here, the same with Konami, already a good unit, could see something like two-turn attack buff with skill two, and maybe a soul protection buff on skill three, I don't expect anything drastic. But then after I wrote this, I'm like, they're putting him in a lot of stuff in social media and things like that. Like, maybe, maybe this is going to be more drastic than that. Maybe this is going to be more of an impactful thing than that. I, I, I feel like this might be a little bit more, so, uh, yeah. I mean, what, what would you guys like to see? What do you guys think will actually be, uh be part of Tion's kit after this. Then we have the <laughs> the bad ones. The ones that you guys don't even know what they do. Actually, let's go take a look at what they actually do. 
uh, we can see here. Can you guys? Uh, yeah, you guys can see the skill. So we already know what uh, Konamiya does. Everyone's, uh, everyone knows that one. This one, we've got the revive. That, I mean, you know the first skill, the second skill. You know this does a, uh, a revive and a cleanse. Uh, there's the actual wording on it, if you guys didn't know. For these guys, um, there nobody knows what they do. Uh, we got the stun here. I mean, the same thing. We got the stun on all of them. Uh, the second skill, continuous damage for three turns. Just continuous damage. Uh, then this one also has a continuous damage for three turns. This one has a second skill that does a stun. So this is different than the other ones. Stuns the enemy with a lightning ball. Uh, not a... Not a super, but it's just a single target stun. Uh, and then this uh, third skill is actually very interesting. I mean, it's 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 not <laughs> it's the same as Bernard. It's very interesting. It's the exact same thing as Bernard. Vega thinks it's interesting. Um, so, filthy attack bar of all allies by 30% increases their attack speed for two turns. The only issue is he's super slow. 93 base speed. All of them are slow. 93, 91, 91, 95. 95, wow. Uh, and a 93, right? So, this potentially could be a very useful unit. I mean, the skill 2 is not really anything too crazy, right? Just continuous damage of one target for three turns. Um, but the rapidity could be something really cool if he was faster or if he had some more going on with that. Because uh, you really can't contest speed with a 93 base speed. It's a little... <laughs> I mean, we already tried to do it with Vastin. It's already hard. We tried to do it with Tiana. It's hard. 93 base speed. That's why he's not used. Because if he, if he had like 105 base speed or something like that, he would be used. Um... Well, I mean, people, people would still prefer Bernard and Kabila. So he would be used more... He would be an option, but he wouldn't be, like, the greatest option. Linderman is kind of... He's just single target wind stun. I mean, he's very not... He's, these guys are nat twos, so... Uh, we've got a stun here. We've got a stun here. All single target stuns. We've got a stun here. Uh, multiple strikes of lightning stunning the enemy for sure. For sure. Um, so, and, it, and it's a multi-hit, too. Uh, and then we have the Rezek, which is kind of a terrible guard. I mean, like, somebody's like, you can't really even use him because he's got super uh, low base speed. This one, like, why would you want to use him for anything? Unless you absolutely had to. But, yeah, on top of the base speed, on top of the single target stun, on top of everything. I mean, he's already bad, but this guy, Rezek, just makes the other ones look good. Because all he does, he does a stun, he does a continuous damage, and then skill 3 is just resistance and accuracy increased by 50. Those are luck skills! Those are... He does a dot and he does a stun. Why does he need this crazy accuracy? Like, he really does not, like... Wow! Really? Well, I guess we don't have to put accuracy on slot 6 for him, then. He's just such a terrible, terrible unit. He's one of the worst units in the game. Um, he's cool looking, but uh, he's like a little purple bird. But um, yeah, not a not a fantastic game break. Not a good at all. <laughs> like, like oh, well, he well, he resists. Good thing he resists. This way he doesn't get CC'd, so he, he could put a dot on you the next turn. So uh, yeah, so the bad ones. And by bad, I do mean kind of bad. Um, well, the fire one is good in comparison. It's just base speed. Uh, skill 3 is basically the same as Bernard. However, he suffers due to low base speed. Logical buffs would be adding 15 speed on his 2A version, making him 108 speed. They could really just add 15 speed across the board, and it wouldn't it wouldn't break them and make them crazy OP. It would just make them, like, actually usable. <laughs> you still wouldn't use Rizak, but you could. You could just add 15 to all of them. Uh, so make him 108 speed. Which would, he's still a little bit slower than Barnard, but it, it would be, uh, it'd be usable. Uh, or he could have a passive effect that allows him to boost his own attack bar when attacked, giving, a, giving him a cut-in mechanic if he's going to continue to have that same low base speed uh, with the current base speed. Uh, for a skill to kind of like how the Water Ryu has like that cut-in mechanic, if he's, if he's touched, then he increases his attack bar. Um, for skill 2, 3 turn dot, it could be buff. I think they did this with the Light Pixie, is like she did a continuous damage before. Well, we could actually take a look if we really wanted to. But she did a continuous damage before with skill 2, and then they buffed it to a strip and continuous damage. It's like, <laughs> hooray! Wow, amazing. So I think that they might be a similar situation with that, is that they, they just make it a strip and a dot, which would be more useful. Um, depending. No, 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 no. I don't, I, I don't want to highlight anything. Uh, and then we have the Wind 1 Stun Machine. All three skills, single target. Stuns feel the most likely buffs could be skill 3 absorb attack bar uh, with each strike if it's a, uh, it's a multi-hit. And then skill 2 that increases attack bar. If it's, it just feels like it's... It, it, it feels like it lends itself to 
attack bar manipulation. Like, they like to do that. They did that with Bella. They did that with Bernard. Uh, he does a... Doesn't Bernard do attack age decrease, slight attack age decrease with skill one? Uh, they did that with the with Water Griffin. So, like, these are things that are already... Um, already been done before of like oh this is how Comtois has approached some of these situations so i kind of feel like it might be similar to uh on this situation uh so let's see and then the dark one oh my god <sighs> get ready for it. probably the same as fire for skill two strip dot in place of just dot his passive has a lot of potential to be impactful though he's so bad now that it, he could be very good um, because to make him useful, he would have to have a significant buff. I'm keeping my eyes peeled for the next Miho type situation. Uh, not necessarily anti-crit, since that doesn't currently matter in the meta, because, uh, on, uh, on Emusha's. Uh, just in general, strong passives can be very OP. Uh, considering he is support class, something that assists allies makes the most sense, either applying his passive to all allies, uh, or giving allies a random buff at the start of their turn, or cleansing a random... Because if you think about it, like... Um, the other, the other Garudas, like, the, the, they have the attack buff, they have the speed buff, they also have a couple debuffs, right? They have the, the stuns and they have the dots and things like that. But it's more about, like, healing, cleansing, attack power buffing the team. Like, these Garudas want to be little helper buddies, right? So, I feel like that, uh, some kind of, uh, some kind of help to the rest of the team is, is going to make the most sense for him. Uh, cleansing a random debuff at the start of the turn could be an option. It would fit the support role and be somewhat consistent with the family. Other options can be counterattacking when enemies receive damage. Kind of like the Wind Monkey, the Dark Elven Ranger, the Light uh, Yeti, things like that. And having a damage mitigation passive like that. These are just different things that I'm throwing out there. Um, but it'd be interesting to see some kind of combination of this or something similar. They could also just give a blanket. Oh, I already mentioned this. Blanket buff to 15 speed of all of them as part of the 2A would make them more viable. Since the base speed on all of them is very low, we can take a look. This would make uh, this one 108. That would make this one 106. That would make this one 106. I mean, that's not that's not super broken. 106 on, on Konami is not super broken. Uh, that would make this one 110. Ooh, that's actually pretty, that's actually pretty good. 110. Uh, and then that would make this one uh, 108 as well. So... Uh, we have that, and then also, there are some people that mention things on Reddit. This is from SW New User. Uh, the usable T on Konamiya won't change that much. I didn't actually read all of this. I, I, like, glanced at it. I was like, oh, okay, let's stick it on. <laughs> let's stick it on there once. They probably have some, like, terrible things, terrible cursors. By the way, Bagel is a terrible person, and I want to punch him in the face. Like, well, yeah, I mean, that's, 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 yeah. Um, so, my guess, giving her additional turn after using skill 3 will look strong. Revive full attack bar attack buff. Interesting. Uh, I like when I give her skill 2 on herself, then I change her skill 1 to skill 2, so you can start to use skill 1. What? Skill 1 now deals damage based on something such as speed. Okay. That makes sense. It's not uh, it's not crazy. Uh, decrease attack bar to give her some CC. They do like to decrease attack bar, right? With with skill 1. They did it with Bella. They did it with... Uh, and they also have Bella increase uh, attack bar with skill 2. Um... And then decrease with skill 1. Bernard decreases with skill 1. Things like that. Uh, for her skill 2, I'd like to see some attack bar increase if you don't use it on your... I think this is kind of similar to what I was thinking with Konamiya. Uh, oh, no, no, no. It's skill 2, skill 2, skill 2. I, I, I thought they said skill 3. Uh, fills up attack bar. If you don't use it on yourself, recovers 50%. Rec okay. Increase these. Okay, so I see what they're saying. A little bit more than just this single target attack boost. Um... Konamiya. I want her to still be a support. Just skill one is good enough. Change skill two and skill three, but she's good right now. Probably. I mean, I've, yeah, I feel the same way as that. I think that these units are going to be... Uh, Konamiya and Tian are probably not going to get too much of a change. Uh, heal should do something else and not be broken. Cleanse is too much, I think. With the cleanse... Uh, the cleanse and attack power buff? I don't think that's too broken. Cleanse and attack power buff. Is it too broken? Uh, continuing turn cycling from Garuda, skill 3 could fall. I mean, the, the Garudas also do have turn cycling in their own kits as well. We got the light one, the water one, and the fire one have some kind of turn cycling uh, already. I was thinking the, uh, the the Linderman having some more turn cycling uh, also. So other Garudas are back and try to be some really Okay. Uh, dark one, monster is useless. Then why don't they let it be useless and make your team better? Uh, budget version of a little bit new, uh, increased team activation rates by some percentage. So basically, like, just applying the passive to the rest of the team. Yeah, so it makes sense. Uh, decreased chance of you, yeah, resistance! <laughs> so resistance. Um, 
And then what else? I changed her skill to make it AoE something. Increase go AoE increase cool time. No, that's not going to happen. A A AoE strip enemies. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Um, Kahul, after reading this monster, I only thought... I mean, the Dark Pixie did get an AoE increase. But the Dark Pixie is... What was the Dark Pixie even before? I don't remember what the Dark Pixie was before. But, uh, yeah. After reading this monster, I only thought, what is 93 base speed? Yeah. Uh, attack buff, just too boring. Um... Some passive turn cycling on a slow hell, slow as hell monster. New skill three passive increases attack bar when ally gets a turn bar. So this is kind of similar to what I was thinking. I think that we're both kind of a little bit thinking the same uh, wavelength when you get a turn increase your attack bar. But then something else would have to move before him. Like the, it makes the most sense for him to like move turn one though. Um, so it, it would have to be like in response to an enemy moving to make it viable. Um, yeah, skill two can be whatever you feel that day. Whatever you feel that day. Probably single target CC or more turns. I feel like the skill two is probably just gonna be it's a dot. They've already done the this the strip into a dot before with the with the pixie, with the light pixie, so I feel like they'll do a strip into a dot. I right, maybe maybe they'll do a dot and uh another debuff. Like what else would go great with a dot? Slow slow, but then it would not tick off enough. Dot and a defense break, dot and a brain, something like that. Could be another buff, add another buff to it. Uh, Linderman, so single target attacks four times stuns. Uh, okay, so actually they had the same uh, same idea here. Twenty percent attack bar reduces the cooldown of this. Oh, I wasn't even talking about reducing the, the cooldown, but cycling attack bar. I said absorb attack bar. If you attack a stun monster, you receive eighty percent attack bar. Skill won't go a cooldown. If you stun with the first attack, you receive attack bar and one turn cool time. I mean, they went a little bit more aggressive with the cool time things, but. I still would. Would you would you use a wind single target CC unit that just keeps things on lockdown? Like I'm sure, if it could keep like Lulu on lockdown, you guys would be like, yes, I would use that if it could keep Lulu on lockdown, guaranteed. So then it would have to strip, and then stun, and then also absorb attack gauge. So that could be a thing with Lenderman. Is like just in theory, how would you make this a meta thing against something like Lulu? or others is, well, actually, that would kind of be Lauren just without a stun for stripping and decreasing attack age. That's basically Lauren. Why are we not using Lauren against Lulu's? That seems like a good idea. We should probably do that. Um, <laughs> we would just resist everything anyway. Uh, Lauren's skill two is not even a uh, 100% chance. I don't remember the chance. I just know it's not a 100% chance uh, anyway. So uh, what do we have here? So that's basically, in conclusion, that's basically it. And then this one, this is from, so that other one was from like a couple months ago. And then four months ago. So this one, but I mean, we've had this discussion before. That's why these people are kind of like talking about these Garuda two ways is because we've had this discussion before. We've seen in Karazhan that they are opponents and we've done videos on this. Other people I'm sure have mentioned this in other videos, like other YouTubers or whatever have mentioned in other videos, I'm sure. Um, so I'm sure it's it, a lot of people have come to the same conclusion. So, first of all, no, nothing was announced. Just waiting for them to get their two A's. They appear in cars. On yeah, exactly. Just like that. Uh, skill 1 gets a turn dot. Skill 2 unchanged. Skill 3 passive, where you successfully dot the end. Skill 3? Increase your allies' attack speed and attack bar. Why are you going to... That sounds worse. <laughs> a second. That sounds worse. I don't agree with that. Uh, skill 1 increased. Stun chance 100%. Skill 2 gets HP or C scale. Skill 3 unchanged. Better stun. No, what? Okay, I don't agree with this either. That's not making them good enough to actually care about. Skill one gets defense scaling. Konamiya? I don't. I. I don't really agree with this one. Okay, maybe I should have read all these before before the video. Uh, skill two unchanged. Skill two is already good. Skill three additional two turn defense. That's very strong though. Cleanse into a defense buff. Cleanse into a defense buff is 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 pretty strong. Um, then it's, then it's basically a, uh, almost a water unicorn. So, uh, it's a stronger, <laughs> stronger water unicorn. Um, yeah, but the skill one defense scaling, the thing with Konamiya is, the, it, 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 Konamiya has low base defense. Konamiya has good base HP, but low base defense. Uh, Tion like Aruda, sp skill one speed scaling, skill two one shit. So that both people had the same idea, apparently. Excuse me. Uh, skill three extra turn after you use a revive and more heal. I think the extra. Well, I don't know why I didn't think of the extra turn after revive. That would be cool. That wouldn't be bad. Uh, skill two also having speed buff for one turn. That wouldn't be bad either. Skill three extra turn synergizes better with supportive use. Uh, Dark Garuda. <laughs> it's got 
Everyone's ideas for the Dark Root is like, well, sit down, because this unit is garbage. Uh, it gave me the worst trouble thinking about something because so super bad thought of a major change just like they did with Jumaline. Skill one hit twice. Jumaline actually is, is, is not that, but like, Jumaline is usable. Um, skill one hit twice with the same stun rate. 50% skill two unchanged. Why are you gonna unchange? This guy likes to unchange some things. Skill two unchanged for the Fire Garuda. Skill two unchanged for the Dark Garuda. They It just does a dot. It's not that exciting. You can definitely <laughs> add more to that. Uh, skill 3 stack effects, uh, every time something on the battlefield dies, one dead unit skill 1 have its stun rate increased to 70 per hit, and you get extra accuracy resistance. No, I don't like that. Skill 2, defense break for one turn, 50% chance. Additionally, you gain 10% accuracy resistance, 3 dead units. Uh, every time a unit dies, you'll see 15% attack bar. Oh, that seems so, uh, overly complicated. They're never gonna, it's too overly complicated that P that Compto is not gonna do that. You know how much text would have to be on the thing? They would have to be like three extra drop down menus for all the text. Um, yeah, I don't, no, they're, they're not gonna do, they're not gonna do that. It would make him stronger when things die. I like my idea better. I mean, that's because it's my, of course I'm gonna like my idea better. What do you guys think? I think the biggest thing is like, <laughs> we all know that, that the dark one is like, Man, he's gonna have to get changed a lot. He's gonna have to be so much less doo-doo. Um, that, that other one is like so overly complicated. It's never gonna be that. I think the easiest thing would be to just like apply his passive to all allies and then giving them some other kind of passive effect as well of some sort, right? Some kind of clans or some kind of buff or, or, or something like that. Damage mitigation just to support the rest of the team because he is a support unit, so... Just supporting the whole team with his passive makes the most sense. So anyway, uh, that's it for this one. That's my thoughts on the my prediction for the next two A. It could be something totally different. They could do uh, something completely. They could do the vagabonds for the next two A. I just feel like based on based on some things that they've been saying and doing lately, based on the fact that we got a Garuda in our inbox. Uh, based on the fact that they've been doing social media posts, I'm like, okay. I always felt like the Garuda was definitely coming for a, uh, for a, for a 2A at some point. But I kind of feel like now that he's going to be one of the next ones. So anyway, uh, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what your thoughts are on <laughs> basically just on how the Dark Garuda can get buffed. Because we all agree that he's absolute garbage. Uh, anyway. There's no two ways around it. Like, you want to talk about a garbage monster, you guys are like, oh, this monster is garbage, that monster is garbage. I don't like this net five, they're garbage. It's like, man, you can this no matter what it is you think is garbage, they're amazing compared to the darker Buddha. That's all I gotta say. Anyway, that's it for this one. Hope you guys draw. See you as always in the next one.